Hello and welcome back to Dicebreaker. I'm Johnny Chiodini and this is How to Pen and Paper, the recurring series that's all about having a nice time with pen and paper role-playing games. So far we've covered the very basics. What is a pen and paper role-playing game and how do you go about picking one that's right for you? Today though we're going to look at something that pen and paper role-players don't always think to discuss, but it's actually very, very important and that is establishing the tone. See, one of the nicest things about tabletop RPGs is how versatile they can be. You might be howling with laughter at the start of a session, scared to death in the middle of it, and then sharing an intense moment of reflection at the end of it. One of the best things about this hobby, in other words, is how varied it can be in terms of mood and intensity. In order to get the most out of the hobby, however, it's best if everybody is coming at the game from roughly the same angle. Or, to look at it another way, if your players go into a game expecting very different atmospheres, there's going to be a bit of a clash in terms of tone, and that can be frustrating for everybody involved. An RPG can be run any number of different ways, no matter what the subject matter. It can be extremely silly, deadly serious, or somewhere in the middle. It's really up to you. Take Boy Problems, for example. Boy Problems is a one-shot RPG set in the far-flung future. The players have been tasked with raiding an extremely well-guarded location wherein lies the Vault, a priceless collection of 200 unreleased Carly Rae Jepsen songs. No, seriously. It's a really funny premise, but then the characters are stepping into very real danger in order to retrieve something their rich and powerful employer has demanded they acquire. So, while of course this game could be played up for laughs, there's absolutely nothing to say the characters themselves couldn't all be deadly serious, grizzled veterans. Now, as any experienced role player will tell you, aiming for a serious tone doesn't mean there won't be moments of levity or even outright hilarity. Similarly, running an off-the-wall game, that doesn't mean there won't be big moments of drama or tension or meaningful and deep character interaction. When I talk about establishing the tone in a pen and paper game, I mean the overall approach everybody takes as a group, identifying the tone the players most want to see in the game and then working together to establish that tone. These conversations are important to have because if the players want drastically different things from the same game, it can become a point of tension around the table, and frankly, that's not what you want. For example, let's say a player wants to make a character that's a grumpy, standoffish assassin. Does the player want the assassin to be taken seriously, or are they leaning into a stereotypical role for comedic effect? Accordingly, do the players make fun of the assassin's gruff demeanour in order to heighten the sense of contrast, or do they give it credence, giving the assassin a bit more heft in the world around them and making them seem genuinely dangerous? These are two very valid ways to react to a character but they have very different tonal outcomes. And ultimately, it's important to know what everyone is going for because if one player is trying to establish a certain tone while another is aiming for something completely different, they're just going to end up pulling in different directions, they're going to end up frustrated, and no one's going to have a good time. That's not to say everyone has to be on exactly the same page, only ever doing something with the express approval of everybody else. Each player is, of course, free to act as they see fit. However, it's important to bear in mind that role-playing is a collaborative story exercise, and the better the players work together, the more fun they'll have, even if their characters have different aims and priorities. Now the importance of establishing the tone has been, um, Established, how do you go about establishing the tone and keeping it going? The most straightforward way is to have a conversation specifically about tone before the first gameplay session, even before character creation, if you can manage it. Discuss how serious you want things to be. Are the characters serious professionals, or are they a bunch of rogues who cannot stop taking the piss out of absolutely everything? There's a very big difference, in other words, between players having a joke while their characters are being relatively serious and the characters themselves being farcical, and establishing where that boundary lies in your group specifically is really important. 
it's best to put a stop to potential player clashes before they even start by talking about what everybody wants out of the game and how straight it's going to be played. And again, this isn't a conversation whereby you dictate how much fun you're allowed to have. Hopefully, all of it is fun. But it's a conversation where you set expectations and make sure everybody is aware of the sort of atmosphere the group is trying to foster. A good way of doing this is to reference other bits of media and talk about what bits you like the most. Saying you want to go for a Peaky Blinders kind of atmosphere, for example, is a quick and easy way of bringing in a very specific and very evocative tone. Similarly, if you're playing Dungeons and & Dragons and you say you'd rather it was more Lord of the Rings than it was Discworld, then there's a high chance the players will instantly know what you're talking about. Once you've decided where the game is going to be pitched, each person involved in the game, no matter what their role, can start thinking about how they're going to engage with it. How their character might behave, in other words. And it's here I'd like to impart two very specific bits of advice that have definitely helped me in the past. First, if you're a player, be mindful of when and where you make jokes. If you're playing in a game in which the world itself is fairly serious, but you've got a mind to say something blisteringly funny, just do it out of character. Or, rather, only have your character make jokes when it makes sense for that person to be making light of a situation. Like I said before, you can have plenty of laughs playing a game with a serious tone, but save the jokes your character actually makes for the times when it's really going to do something for the story. If they only crack wise every so often, in other words, it'll give each one of those instances a bit more impact. Similarly for the GM, think about how you describe your character's actions and especially their failures because they reinforce the tone an awful lot. If a character attempts to jump from one rooftop to another, for example, there is a world of difference between them clean missing and landing in a cart full of dung and landing awkwardly on some roof tiles, having them break free and tumble away as they fall with a startled cry onto the cobblestones below. Even if the damage they take in this scenario is exactly the same, the way you describe it and how much of it is the player's dumb fault will really impact how they feel about what just happened and how their character is going to be perceived. This is also a really good opportunity to talk about the type of content that should be considered off the table. Some players might be comfortable playing in a game where sexual violence, torture, racism or other difficult topics are a feature of the world. Other players, unsurprisingly, would prefer to avoid that sort of thing. Similarly, some people can be squeamish about violence and gore, and being upfront about where your boundaries lie is a good way to make sure the action stays in the sweet spot. Remember that every person is different, and if somebody would rather not play in a game featuring torture or hate crimes, then that's fine. Some viewers might be hearing this and thinking that's limiting the world or denying the existence of real world problems that could be engaged with in a meaningful and cathartic way in play. And that's a perfectly valid opinion, and for what it's worth, I do think real world issues can be tackled meaningfully in RPGs, but if the alternative is that players are feeling alienated, fearful, or entirely discouraged from playing, then removing those aspects, in my opinion, is a small price to pay. After all, role-playing is, in many respects, a bit of escapism, so why force people to confront things they don't really want to have to think about in an otherwise fun activity? A tip for DMs in particular, sometimes players don't know that something is going to be particularly upsetting for them until they're faced with it in the middle of a game, and if you're worried about this happening, you can play using pause cards or something called the X. The principle behind both of these things is the same. If the game goes somewhere players suddenly find themselves uncomfortable with, they can hold up a pause card or make an X with their hands by crossing their wrists. At this point, you can pause the game, take a moment to talk about what the upsetting stuff is, comfort that person if they need it, and then find a way for the game to continue without the upsetting content. Now that's not to say it's a way around encounters or anything, this isn't a cheap mechanism for players, it's just an opportunity for them to flag up stuff that's upsetting and tweak it so that everybody can continue. 
If, for example, the players got attacked by giant spiders, but one of the players was severely phobic, they could pause the game, talk about that phobia, and then it's really not much of an issue for the DM to swap out the spider for some other creature. The stats don't even need to change, it's just not a spider anymore. Now, as even veteran GMs will tell you, the first session of a tabletop RPG can be a little stop-start, a bit hesitant, and there's a good chance it'll also be fairly inconsistent. This is all perfectly normal and it's nothing to worry about. It takes time to get used to a new set of characters and to work out what they're like, and that includes any character you yourself might have created and are playing. Even if you have a really good idea of what a character is like and how they're likely to behave in most situations, you might find yourself in the middle of a session feeling like it's not quite right. And that's absolutely fine. It's okay to tweak your character after the fact and to have an open discussion about why you want to do it. Maybe your character turned out to be less trusting than you intended. Perhaps some quirk you gave them during character creation isn't as much fun as you thought it might be and you want to swap it for something else. Or maybe you feel like your character was actually too laid back and you wish they'd reacted more strongly to a particular situation or stimulus. The point is, you're allowed to try and fix things about your character that you aren't happy with, either through story beats or simply holding your hands up and saying, hey, I would like to make a change, I think it would make for a better game. In fact, it's good to keep talking about the campaign in general as it goes on, in order to make sure it's hitting the notes everybody is expecting it to. Sometimes the players are keen to talk about their characters' backstories, but they haven't been given much of a chance. Perhaps there's an overall feeling the party is too quick to kill their enemies, and that they value the lives of others too cheaply. Perhaps they've managed to get past every obstacle thus far without serious harm, and they want to know what it's like to really be fighting for their lives. Or maybe they just did some social stealth and they really enjoyed it, and actually they'd just like to let everybody know that they're open to more of that in the future. I'll stress that conversations like these are not an excuse to have a dig at the GM or any of the other players. If there are genuine grievances around the table, then they should be dealt with separately and specifically. Rather, talking about the overall tone of the campaign is a good way to make sure it stays in the sweet spot, ensuring everybody is having as much fun as possible. So, if you hadn't already gathered, the guiding principle of setting the tone in a tabletop RPG is discussing the type of game everybody wants to play, supporting that tone while playing, and checking in every now and then to see that everyone is still having fun. It's easy enough to do, and overall it makes for a much more enjoyable game all round. Role-playing, as I said before, is a collaborative exercise after all, even if one player is driving the vast majority of the action. And everybody should have a stake in the overall direction the group takes. And that's about it, really. Hopefully you found this video interesting and useful. If you have any tips of your own for establishing tone in an RPG, whether that's creative use of music or props or anything else, to be perfectly honest, do let us know in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, there are loads more from Dicebreaker for you to watch. Some of them should be on screen now, so do give one of those a click. Do like, subscribe, and ring the bell icon so you don't miss anything else from us. But most importantly, thank you very much for watching, and have a lovely day.